An animal you don't often see on this channel would be our Timor monitors. We have a beautiful pair of these guys and we were planning on upgrading their enclosure when we moved to our new facility in the big enclosures we're planning on custom building for all of our animals. But because of COVID, construction has been put back several months. So today we're just going to upgrade them at home. The plan is to use this guy over here, which we took out of storage, but as you can see, since it's been in storage for several years, it's pretty dusty and gross. Can you see that smiley face? You can't, you can see it here. Yeah, that's how gross it is. So we're gonna have to clean that out and totally revamp it, but I think our Timors are going to love this as a new mansion. Oh, she's calm down. <laughs> she wants in it already. Yeah, she does. <laughs> well, we have a lot of work ahead of us. You ready to start cleaning? Yes. <laughs> Let's start. Ta-da! It's clean! You can't even tell it's here! Yeah. Good job. Ed cleaned it. I'll give him all the credit. Well, on thank that. you. Now you see me. Now you don't. Ah, that's much better. Oh, whatever. I think it's missing something, though. Like, it seems too open. We could paint it. Yeah, that'll work. All right, should we show them how to do that? Sure, let's paint the sides. So, when it comes to painting these things, the first thing you have to do is tape off the parts you don't want painted. Right, Emily? Yes. All right, I'm fixing a piece of background that I, that I broke. And we're trying to do this really fast because it's 8 o'clock at night and we have to do this outside. And the sun's going down. And the sun is disappearing. Alright, so it's all taped up. As you can see, you got tape on all the corners and edges. We have a little bit of sunlight left. It's still somewhat decently bright outside. So do you want to try and... Let's bring it out! Alright. So apparently that will work on glass. Okay. So we'll see. First time we've ever done this. Yes, it is. There we go. Look, we have black sides. They're so pretty. They look great. Ah, it still looks really bright out here, even though it's not. Oh, the mosquitoes are everywhere. And Emily's getting eaten by mosquitoes. Ah. Look, other than a bug, now two bugs that have squished into it. Oh, really bugs? Dumb bugs. They are one with the enclosure I'm, now. Just have to rip those off later. But yeah, that should, and then we have that background in. That should make good. it nice and secure for them. Yeah, I like it. Looks good. This is where we're going to put their brand new mansion. They were previously housed in just a 55 gallon tank, which worked, but we wanted to be able to give them more vertical space, which is what inspired today's home makeover. But we also didn't want that sitting on the floor. So we bought a cabinet just for the Exoterra and we tried finding them everywhere. We went to Ikea, nobody had cabinets. We searched for like two days and then we stumbled upon this one at Goodwill. So. Yay, Goodwill, all right. And then we slapped a brand new paint job on this cabinet, so we spray painted it black and did some awesome cool green effects for snake discovery colors, and I think we're good to go. We did have some issues, though, trying to paint this. That's not really that much darker, is it? Not a whole lot. Perfect. Let's see how uh, it looks. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> Will it be halfway decent at all? Oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Like, I mean, uh, it'll work. Yeah. Nah. That did not turn out. But I think it turned out pretty well. Yeah, I think so. Looks good. It's Should better we... than $200 uh, cabinets that we were finding. Yeah, really, from fancy places? Mm -hmm. We didn't need that. <laughs> we just we just bought this used one. Yeah. Alright, so should we put the new cage up there? Yes, let's put it on and set it up! I guess it would have been lighter if we took all this stuff out. Yeah, probably. And then moved it on. But you know, afterthought. <laughs> okay, so the plan for this new mansion is to set it up as a bioactive enclosure, just like with several of our others that we're starting to switch over to more bioactive nowadays. That way we can use this in our facility when we have the enclosure shelving units built. We can just move this right in there 
and they'll be good to go. And we'll just get to enjoy them on display at our house for a little while beforehand. Like the other bioactive enclosures we've built, we are going to do a drainage layer with clay balls at the bottom. The clay balls here are pretty dusty in the bags that they're sold in, so I recommend rinsing them off first. But yeah, we, we're gonna need a lot more than this. We need about three inches of these at the bottom for our drainage layer. Above the drainage layer, we're going to put some screen netting cut to size on top to divide it from the substrate layer that goes above. Otherwise, all that dirt from the substrate layer is just gonna go straight into the clay balls, which is supposed to hold water, and it's just gonna make it a big mucky mess. So you wanna keep them separated. They do sell this screen specifically for bioactive builds, but here's your first money saving tip. Just go to a hardware store and buy screen door screen and cut it to size. It's a lot cheaper. For the substrate layer, since it worked out so well last time during our bioactive builds, we are going to use the Snake Discovery Awesome Mix that we came, not came up with, kind of came up with. Basically, in our substrate layer, we want to try to avoid using peat moss since it's not very sustainably harvested at all and it destroys bogs. So for our substrate layer, we are going to use a 50-50 combination to start with as a base of cocoa fiber and tree fern. Usually the concern with using tree fern though is that it's not sustainable sustainably harvested. However, and I don't know how recently this came out, but we're new to knowing about it. Uh, New Zealand actually came out with New Zealand fernwood, which is sustainably harvested tree fern substrate. And it's grown and cultivated in a very ecologically uh, preserving way so that you can use it without worrying about the environmental impact. So we're going to use this along with cocoa fiber for our substrate layer. Next we'll blend in some sphagnum moss and this will help add some aeration and volume to the soil as well as help hold in moisture. Then we are going to add some sand. For your second money saving tip in this video, you can get sand at just Menards. It doesn't have to be specific reptile branded sand. Just get like a nice natural sand and it's like $5 for a 40 pound bag at Menards. The next ingredient in our Snake Discovery Awesome Mix is just activated carbon or charcoal. This is sold by Marine land. You can get it other places too. I just was able to find a good deal on a huge container of this on Amazon. It was like I think $12 for this whole thing and we won't be using all of this so it'll go a long way with our future bioactive builds. And by the way, I'll put links to everything that we're using in the description below in case you need it too. And finally, we're going to sneak in some pieces of shed skin from our snakes. Looks like Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, it is. Soon we're gonna kiss in the middle as well as some crumpled up dead leaves to act as a starting food supply for the isopods and basic cleanup crew we plan on adding into this enclosure. Once the monitors are eating and pooping and shedding themselves, they'll contribute more to the food source for those invertebrates. Oh, jeez. Good job. All right. Nice. Now I'll clean up what I spilled. Now that the substrate layer is in, we're going to add our cleanup crew. And today we're going to be adding some Dalmatian isopods. And there's some springtails jumping around in here too that we took from some of our other enclosures. So we're just gonna add them like that. We're kind of running low on isopods right now. Some cultures aren't doing as well as we had hoped, so we might have to buy some more to put in here. And then to hold in the moisture in the substrate layer, we're going to add some biodegradables or some leaf litter basically. And also, since we've just had it forever, we're going to throw in some pillow moss because I just want to use this up. For a water dish, here's another money-saving tip. Paint trays. These are awesome water dishes for all sorts of reptiles because when you nestle them in, it makes a perfect little ramp into the water or to the reservoir. They sell a water dish just like this specifically for reptiles and it looks more like a rock that gradually goes down, but it's like $20. This was $2.50 at Menards. Before we finish the leaf litter layer though, we're gonna add our live plants. I say before we finish because I kind of forgot about them until just now. And then in attempts to prevent them from dragging substrate into the water dish as they crawl in, I think I'm gonna do a liner of leaves around the outside. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll try it. Look at this huge leaf. Jeez. That's ginormous. Yeah, it is. Oh look! This snake plant has a baby! It's kind of ironic that we're using snake plants in not a snake cage in <laughs> snake discovery. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I didn't think of it. I guess we should have put all the plants in before the leaf litter. Yeah, we should have. I thought about that too. Yeah, kind of. Pothos. Yay, pothos! Ooh, where are we gonna put this? Is there any way we could like... Hang them? 
Yeah. We could droop them over a piece of driftwood. Okay. Yeah, here, let's put the pothos in after some branches. Oh yeah, look at this. We've got our basking platform that'll go there. We've got all sorts of climbing structures for them to get up there. And that's a hollow tube of cork bark. So they can go inside and hide in there. They can hide in there. They'll probably, honestly though, wedge themselves behind the water dish. But it still looks awesome. They've got like a lagoon. I definitely wanted to put a piece of wood with leaves over the water so they could like hop into it. I don't know if they're gonna use it or not, but I think it looks cool. And now we move on to lighting. It just occurred to me that we haven't really talked about what lighting we use for our reptiles here. So the lowdown is we use T5 fixtures and T5 bulbs, and that's because they're newer technology than the older T8 bulbs. They're smaller and therefore sleeker. Therefore the hoods, I think, look better because they're not as big and bulky. And the T5 UVBs produce more UV rays and therefore more UVB rays for your reptile. In addition, they also penetrate further down into the enclosure. So we switched everything over to T5s a couple years ago and we're loving it. As far as heat bulbs go, since UVB lights don't produce much warmth and for the Timor monitors, we need to create a basking spot of about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. They need it hot. In order to achieve this previously, we were using the older style like incandescent basking bulb and this is a 120 watt bulb and it worked it got the basking spot to where we needed it but it's big it's bulky and it uses 120 watts so in this upgrade we are also swapping out their basking bulbs from incandescent to halogen the halogen lamp is I mean much smaller and that's because it doesn't need to be as big as this guy in order to maintain the little bulb inside and this bulb this halogen bulb is only 25 watts and that's all it takes with a halogen lamp in order to create the basking spot they need. So not only is it smaller, but it uses a lot less electricity. However, due to the smaller lamp size, there isn't as much spread of that warmth throughout the entire enclosure. So that's why we are going to use two halogen lamps. We're going to use the 25 watt bulb in this lamp on the side, right above the basking platform. And then we're going to put a 50 watt bulb in this one to put more centrally located in the enclosure to kind of broadcast the warmth throughout the entire cage. The lamps we're using today are actually the Zilla halogen mini domes and they're not a sponsor at all. We just really like these lamps. However, the bulbs, I mean, they do sell bulbs. They sell 25 watt and 50 watt bulbs, which is what we're using today, one of each. The bulbs from Zilla I believe are like $10.99, but your next money saving tip is if you go to Menards, you can get the same bulbs for $4. So we, we got the bulbs from Menards. The one important thing to note about halogen bulbs though is that you should not touch the bulb with your bare skin. Instead, you should use a piece of cloth over the bulb to install it. It's the same concept as replacing a headlight in your car. Those are often, are they always mercury bulbs? I don't know. I think so. I don't know. I don't know cars. I know reptiles, but <laughs> I've replaced mercury bulbs in my car's headlights before and you can't touch them with your skin because then you get oils on the bulb, which causes impurities, which causes the bulb to burn out sooner. So that covers all the lighting we're using in this enclosure. So let's get them installed. Even though we're now using two lamps instead of just the one, this is a 25 watt, and again, this is a 50 watt. Together, that's only 75 watts we're using for heat, whereas previously in this bulb, this is 120 watts, so we're saving a lot of electricity. Yeah, we could even throw another 50 watt lamp up there and still pretty much be equal to what we were doing before. Yeah, we really could. I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of snuck up on us. This has been like a three day project. Yeah, mainly Wait. that stupid shelf. Took that forever stupid to get that. shelf that we got from Savers. I guess we'll never go to Home Furniture or, or Ikea. Schneiderman or Ikea ever again. No, I just want to do Savers or Goodwill. And then just spray paint. Yeah. Anyway. Yay, now we get to put him in. Here is our beautiful male Timor monitor. He's not too sure what to think of all of this. He's yeah. not very happy. He hasn't had his basking bulb for the last two, three hours, so he's kind of cranky. Yeah, I guess I would be too. Buddy, you're gonna love this. Ready? Where are you gonna go? Oh, right up to the top. What in the world? Look at that face. He's so confused. Oh, he's climbing up the side. 
Here is our female. We have a nice adult pair, well, almost, almost adult pair of Timors. She's an interesting case. We got them both from Craigslist, and they were kind of a rescue type situation. And the female here came to us with like a sealed shut eye. So we've brought her to the vet, we've had consultations, and the overall consensus is it seems like it's an older injury. She may have been previously wild caught, and it honestly would be just more harm than good to open up the eye at this point, according to our vets. So they could perform a removal of her eye, but since it's so healed over, we're not really worried about it, and no. nor are the vets. So we are going to put her in. Here, I'll put you over here. Whoa. Where are you gonna go? Down, I guess. Oh, she's hanging. <laughs> really? What are you doing, girl? I cannot wait to watch them explode. Yeah, it's effortless for them. They walk sideways just as easy as they walk forward. They're like mountain goats. Yeah. What are you singing? Music. It's the music you're gonna probably have in the background of the montage. Oh, yeah. You can just keep going, we'll use your made up music. Yeah, sure. Womp 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 Perfect. Called it. She found her way underneath the water dish. Girl, you have this huge, luxurious cage, and the one place you sit is behind the water dish. Yeah, the only other thing we might do with this enclosure, like as we move it to the facility, is we're gonna replace this foam background with one of the universal rock backgrounds, because I can already tell their claws are just gonna tear this up. Yeah. They've already made some pretty bad scratches. Yep. So we'll probably replace that someday, but that's another project. Should we check temp? Yeah, it's been set up for a while. Let's make sure it's the right temperature. 120? 137 degrees. Oh, that's a All little right. toasty. So that's the 25 watt too. Oh jeez. All right, well let's, Zilla sends with these guys, which you add to them to lift it up. Yes. So we'll do that. Let's put the legs on. Yep. There. That's better. That won't get quite as hot. Nope. And we'll check it here in a minute to see what the temperatures are. I cannot wait to watch these guys over the next few days to see how they explore their new habitat. We used to have three. We had a male and two females that we all got as a group off Craigslist, but one of them just like crashed right after we got them and passed away. I don't know what conditions they were being kept in previously because I think they met you with like a box, right? Yeah, they, they just are... met me uh, with a non-insulated box in a parking lot of a Walgreens and went, here you go. Yeah, pretty much. So the other two though are doing fantastically. Is that a word? And they are going to love this upgrade, I think. So thank you everybody for watching today's Timor Monitor upgrade video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you to our, he's just climbing all around. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to our amazing Patreon backers for your wonderful support and for allowing us to do this awesome upgrade today. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you next time.